I was always led by the conviction that spiritual resources are absolutely indispensable for making human development and cultural diversity uh, into reality. In the fact that the new center organizing our forum has been placed under the twin names of Sogwansi and Matteo Ricci. Through this patronage, its founders are inscribing, inscribing this academic endeavor into the domain of human friendship, and more specifically, of intercultural inter friendship. It is also true to say that without Sue, without his welcoming, without his order to study, his questions, his passions in revealing to Richie the Chinese ways of thought and cultural treasures, there wouldn't have been a Richie. Their interaction is a fascinating chapter in the history of scientific, cultural, and spiritual encounters that shows how relevant and inspiring remains today the life of these two pioneers, <coughs> friendly pioneers. This anniversary has implications for the future of the interaction between China and the rest of the world. It helps one to reflect anew on the role of China in the globalization era to the way to develop meaningful intercultural exchanges for our times. Of particular significance are the subject matter and the title of the first booklet he published in China, a booklet composed on the basis of his recollections of Greek and Latin authors. The title is On Friendship. The fact that this is his first published work makes it resonate like a program. From now on, friendship would be at the root of his communication strategy. By deliberately choosing this approach, Ricci would also prove to be a peace builder of particular historical significance. The way he introduced Chinese classics to the West also contributed to this endeavor. Later on, relationship between China and the West would be marred by the rise of imperialism and cultural misunderstandings. Still, the living memory of Ricci and of the first Jesuits who followed in his steps has continued to reassure the Chinese people that the message and ways of interacting they were bringing with them could go along with respect for one's culture and national dignity as well as with equality in partnership. Peace builder, Richie is also a pioneer of dialogue. The true meaning of the Lord of Heaven the work of natural theology he wrote in his maturity is conceived as a dialogue between a Confucian scholar and a sage from the West. And this dialogue is not only a rhetorical device, but does reveal his deep-rooted confidence in man's ability to communicate in truth and spirit 
with the help of reason and the other qualities he is endowed with. In an age where communication seems sometimes over easy and globalized, Richie's example sounds to us as a reminder. We can never dispense ourselves from the immersion into the language and mindset of the other till it somehow becomes our own. Shortcuts in apprenticeship and communication eventually go with the watering down of the quality of the exchange and sometimes even with dangerous misunderstandings. And now I must pledge, pledge that in, in another life, I will try to be a good Chinese-speaking person. Richie and Su, and they have lessons which are still valid for us today. Friendship is both the starting point and the fruit of dialogue pursued in truth and reciprocal respect. And if we are not to nurture such spiritual attitude, we are not able to tackle the challenges that define our common destiny.